In this video, we're going to take a look at a pwn challenge from the Angstrom CTF 2023. The challenge is called Leak, and there's no description, but we've got a server to connect to once we get things working locally. We've got this binary to download called Leak, and there's also a Docker file there, which I'm not going to download. So I'm going to download Leak and make it executable. Try to run the binary, and we get this message saying glibc 2.34 is not found. So you can download the Docker file. You can also just download this glibc, which I've done. So I'm going to move leak into this folder. Let's go in there and see what we've got. All right, so we've got our libc library here, and then I'm just going to patch leak to use that. So if we do ldd leak, you can see that the libc library it's set to use at the moment is my libc library. So I'm basically going to use pwn init and provide leak. And it's going to have a look in the directory we're in and see what libc library we've got. And then it's going to patch the binary to use that. So if we do ldd leak, it now shows that it's using this local libc. Now if we try to run it, you can see that we can actually provide some input. Okay, so let me minimize this so we can see a little better. And it asked us to, it said no buffer overflows, it dares us to leak the secret. It takes some input and then it asks us for the secret. So we could try and do that again and just try and enter in some really long input. See, does it crash the program? It doesn't, but notice we got back a slightly different response that time. Again, we could try a buffer overflow here as well. Nope. So let's also have a look at the binary protections that are enabled. And we'll find out that we've got a canary, so and we've got NX enabled. So if there is a buffer overflow, we're not going to be injecting shellcode onto the stack. It's not going to be executable. We've also got a canary. So if we are doing a buffer overflow on the stack, we would need to be leaking that canary and then overriding it with the correct value. So that's either a hint that we need to leak the canary or we need to do a ROP. Well, we need to do both. We'd need to leak the canary and do ROP because we can't do any shellcode. Or it's also possibly that the intended goal of the challenge isn't to do a stack overflow and isn't related to the canary. So that's fine. Let's also go and open this up in Geardra. I'm going to do Geardra auto-t to do a temp directory. If you've not watched my videos before, this is just a script that uh, Libra2k put together, which just automatically runs through that process of like, opening up the binary, importing it into Geardra and doing the auto analysis stuff. Still takes a couple of seconds, but it just saves a bit of time. Okay, so with this open in Geardra, let me resize this a little bit. We can go and have a look at our functions. If this is stripped, we wouldn't see the function names, but in this case it's not, so we can see our main function is where it's going to start off. We've also got a win function, which is going to open up the flag.txt and print it out to the screen, basically. So there's our goal, is going to be to call this win function. And let's go to our main. Quite a bit in here. What I normally do is start to rename some of this stuff so that we can make a bit more sense of it. So we know that we have the stack canary, which I'm going to just rename to canary. You can just type L to rename that or right click it. And essentially what this is doing here, it's getting this random value at the beginning. And then whenever it gets to the end of the function, it will... Um, Oh, here it is here. Okay, so whenever it gets to the end of the function before the return, it's going to check and make sure that canary still equals what it was set to at the beginning, which means if we overflow the buffer on the stack and we start overwriting these values on the stack, we'll also overwrite that canary, which will cause it to crash when it tries to return. So we'd need to leak it and then provide that on the stack in the right location in order to meet that check. All right, what else have we got here? We can, this is a counter. So we've got this counter, which is saying, it's basically loop into 100. So I'm gonna change that to count. And we've also got a time. I'll just leave that as it is. We've got two chunks that are being malloced here. So you might wanna change this to decimal if it's a bit easier to read. Decimal 32 and 16. We've got a get random here as well. So this is a random chunk. I'm gonna change that to random chunk. And again, it's just getting 32 bytes of random data and fill in that chunk with it. We've also got this S and you can see down here, this S is gonna be an input. So I'm gonna change that to user input chunk. And let's also rename the variable in the loop. I like to change these to like I or J or K or whatever, just to make it a bit more readable. 
I'm going to also change these to decimal. And what else do we have? We've got, so it's looping through there, through the random chunk, and it's going to say it's looping through 32 times. And if the current character in the chunk, the current byte, is a null byte or a new line, it's going to replace it with 0, 1 in hex. And we've got this print message, all right, so no stack buffer overflows. We've got this input function. So again, let me change this to buffer. So it's reading in 1,280 bytes into this 1,288 byte buffer. We've got a string length, so I'll change that to buffer len. We've got a canary again. And uh, that's all looking good. Okay, so it's just a custom function here, which is going to take our user input. All right, let's go back. And we've got a string compare here. So f gets into local 38. Where is local 38? Okay, so we've got this local 38, which is 40 bytes. Let me change that to buffer. All right, so just to confirm what's happening. It is taking, it's creating a user input chunk, 16 bytes. It's creating a random chunk of 32 bytes and filling it with random data. It's then going to take some input from us into the user input chunk. And then it's going to print that out to the screen. And then it's going to ask us for the secret. So it's asking us to provide the secret, which is 33 bytes. And then it's going to compare that, see if they match. And if they do, it'll let us continue where it's going to ask us for some more input. And then it's going to free those two chunks and then go through to the next round. Okay, so if this didn't make sense, let me just try and break that down a little bit. Essentially, we've got a loop which is looping through 100 times. And each time it loops through, it's going to generate a new 32 byte random value. And then it's going to ask us what that value is, that secret, and we need to provide it. If we do that, th not 32 times, if we do that 100 times, then it's going to call this win function, which we know is going to give us the flag. So that's the goal. The question is, how do we leak this 32 bytes of data so that we can provide it back? And I'm not great with heap stuff. I've actually not done any pwn challenges in a long time. I can't remember when my last pwn video was. So I struggled a bit solving this challenge and had to do quite a bit of debugging and even using GDB. It's been a while, so I was like forgetting commands and stuff like that. So um, I think that's a good process anyway of having to debug these things with GDB and then you can actually see how things look in memory and we're going to do that here as well. Now you'll remember that whenever we tried to enter in a long input at the beginning it did actually print out some unusual values and this was the first thing that occurred to me is I've seen challenges like this before where you've got to leak out the 32 bytes or however much data and the thing that separates strings in memory, whenever you can see like puts is called here, the thing that actually separates the strings is a null terminator. So whenever it calls puts on our user input chunk, it's basically going to keep printing all of the bytes until it reaches a null terminator. So if we're able to overwrite a null terminator, then whatever's separate, whatever's on the other side of that null terminator will become part of that string. It'll just keep printing until it gets to a null byte. So you see that quite often with things on the stack, but not as often with the heap, which I thought was interesting. And to play around with this, what I'm going to do is go and create a script with Pwn Tools. So I'm going to copy over a template I've got in my GitHub, which is just official template. And we'll call this exploit.py. Let's open this up. And we don't need to change too much here. There's a function here, which is for buffer overflow. So I'm going to remove that because this is a heap challenge. I'm going to change the binary name to leak. And we can put some breakpoints and stuff in here if we need to. We'll remove this because, again, not a buffer overflow. Our libc, we don't need that because it looks like we just need to try and leak this value. So there's no return to libc. It's actually a return to win challenge. And similarly, we're not going to be doing that with the payload then. So essentially, we want to send off some data. Let's do, let's see what it's asking again. So leak. All right. So after sends this so I'm going to take a copy of this we'll say after we receive that let's send it cyclic and then we can send it like I can't remember what I sent it initially I think I started with 16 our, our uh, chunk is 16 bytes if we remember where is it where is it here so our chunk is 16 so you can try 16 and keep moving your way up if we actually let me try and do 30 and then it's going to do io.receive until let's see what happens after we put an input. 
it's going to say, so what's the secret? Okay, take a copy of that. And then we can also say, send line after, send it after that. And we need to provide something for now. I'll just put like a character just to try and fill this in. Okay, let's see how that looks. Again, we can change this to info or error or warning or debug, depending on how much output we want. And because we've got this start function here, we can very easily swap between debugging with GDB, connecting to the remote server, or just running it locally. All right, so with that done, let's run Python exploit. We run through that, we get our wrong, and we don't see any interesting output there either. Okay, so that was with 30 bytes. Let's try and increase it. Just doing this for demonstration. You could work this out basically by fuzzing as well. I'm gonna change that to 32. We run through that again, and you see that we got back this input, this output last time. This time, should I say, I'm getting confused. And the output has this value in it. So you see right here, between our input that it's reflecting back, and the so what is your secret, it's got these bytes which go from here. So here's our new line, 0a. So all the way to here, is the secret data basically. Um, but that didn't do anything for us because we didn't actually grab the data. Let me change this and say that our secret is equal to io.receive line. And then we might want to strip it as well. Actually, we know it's a 32 byte data. What I'm going to do instead of stripping, let's do um, 0 to 32. And then we send that off as the secret here. Okay, give that a go. We run through that, it says wrong, but you can see that it did send it off, did it? I can't actually see. Oh, it sent off this, all right, so that's not right. So it's received line. So what's happened there is it's received the line as this bit, this skull, 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 bro, really. And we don't want that, we want the line after it. So I'm just gonna add another receive line io.receive line. This is the biggest issue I have with scripts in Pwn Tools is just sorting out the receive lines and send lines. And sometimes it needs to be send rather than send line, etc. Uh, so we do that. All right, so this time that looked better, but it still didn't work. And we've got these two new lines here as well, which doesn't look right. It started off at BE, which looks okay. All right, let's go back. You might have noticed that I skipped from 30 to 32. So let me go back and do 31. I did that on purpose. Go back and do 31. Try that again. And this time it worked. So if we go and have a look at the difference actually, we can see this was 21 bytes. We're still sending 21 bytes, but we don't have those two new lines at the end. Uh, it needed to be 31 anyway. We'll go and have a look at how this looks in memory and find out why that is. But what we were expecting to happen is after that comes back as correct, if we go back to the code, it should be saying, what's your secret? We give it the secret and if they match, it'll say, okay, we'll give you a reward. And then it asks us for some more input, which we didn't actually do, did we? Let's go. I'll give you a reward for guessing it. Change my mind. Okay. So let's add this in as well. Let's say IO send line after and Say what you want, this is what we're interested in. Okay, say what you want. And it's waiting for some input from us now. And I'm just gonna put in here test. And we'll try that again. And we got the same thing. Okay, hmm, I changed my mind, invalid pointer. I think actually, let me have a look at this again. This new line here, we don't want this here, right? Because this is 21, which is 33 in hex. And we should actually be sending 32. Maybe the new line does need to be there. Let's go back and try it, I can't remember. Uh, send, so instead of send line after, I'm going to do send after. Yeah, I run into this problem, these problems a lot with Pwn Tools, so just something to bear in mind. We've also got an error there about bytes, let me fix that. Okay, but we still get this error, invalid pointer. Alright, let me try and, let's go back to our script, now let's go back to our code. And, yeah, this is where it's running into the error then, it's trying to free the random chunk, and the error it's coming up with is saying invalid pointer. So what we want to do is go and have a look and see what's wrong with the chunk because we need it to get past these two parts so it gets on to the next round and we need it to run through 100 times. So we need to find out what this error is about here. So we can set up a free, uh, not a free, we can set up a breakpoint around this free. So if we take a copy of this, we can go 
add it to our breakpoints here. We'll say break star 0x and then paste that in. So we want to see whenever this spree is called what's wrong with the heap. And we also want to find out what the heap was supposed to look like. So let's go back to where the chunks are created up here. It takes our input. Let's try and set up a breakpoint. Let's set up a breakpoint around here and we'll take a look at the heap. All right, and then because we've got this GDB, because we've got this template script that we're using, we can basically just run the same thing again, but do GDB in capital letters at the end, and it'll pop up this other window where we'll be able to have a look at our breakpoints. So this was the first breakpoint that was set up. And you can see then it's at that printf that we were just looking at, and we can type in heap, and it'll actually show us the layout of the heap. So we can see the address of each chunk, we can see the size, and we can also do viz. If you do viz heap chunks, we can actually just type viz. This is for home debug, by the way. So if you're using a different plugin for GDB, it'll be different. If you're using like Jeff, you'll need a different command. And this allows us to actually look at the layout of the heap. Now, in case you're not very familiar with the heap, like myself, you might want to have a look at a diagram as to what we're looking at here. This is quite simple because things get a bit more complicated when you look at using free and stuff whenever chunks have been like deallocated and then reused things become a bit more complicated but in this case before any freeze have been called we've simply got our chunks let me do heap again we've simply got these chunks and essentially the layout is something like this so we basically have these various chunks on the heap and the chunk has some metadata which will say what the size of the chunk is and then some flags as well and then it actually has the data that we're allocating to the chunk, whatever our user data is or the random data or whatever's being put in there. And then it has the previous size, which is not used while allocated. And in this case, it's not allocated, sorry. In this case, it is allocated. So that's not used basically. So what you're essentially looking at then is your, you can see here the size is two one. That's the size of the chunk. And then you can see the, the data in the chunk in green. And then we've got the same thing here. We've got this 31. And that's the 31 here is showing the size. This is our random data. And we've also got a top chunk, um, another chunk here. But essentially, these are the two chunks we're interested in, the user data and the random data. Let me try and do next. And I want it to take our input. Let's have a look again. Biz. Should have set up another breakpoint. I'm not actually too sure. Let's call inputs. Oh, it has called input. Let's have a look. Okay, see that's taken a long time. That's not a good sign. Essentially, it's taken our input, but remember because we've actually overflowed the input, we used 31. Remember our chunk size is supposed to be 16, but if we actually have a look at where it's taken our user input, it's not checking the size, what the size should be. So it's actually going to take up to 1,280 bytes into what is a 16 byte chunk, allowing us to essentially overflow that chunk and go over into the next one. And that's why that took so long to come back is because this is messed up. If we go and have a look at the heap now, you see this strange size, which looks like it's ASCII. Like if I go and unhex that, that's our cyclic pattern, which we have in our script. You know, we're doing the cyclic here. So we're actually overwriting the size. Um, let's go back. We're actually overwriting the size. And what that basically means is it's got rid of that 31 byte chunk which was the chunk with the random data so obviously when it tries to now free that chunk lost it again when it tries to free that chunk it's of course going to run into an error because we have messed up the layout of the heap but we need to mess up the layout in order to actually leak the random value because why is this happening well if you think about it like this the those heap those chunks on the heap are user input and our random data are right beside each other and whenever it's go into call puts on our user input chunk, it's gonna keep printing the characters until it reaches a null byte. But if we overwrite that null byte and overwrite basically enough on the heap to the point where there is the next null byte is after the random data, then it's just gonna print out that random data as well. Hopefully that makes sense. Let me let me just run that again very quickly. Uh, where is it? Close down this. Let me just run that again very quickly just to show what I mean. And if that's, let me, let's go back, let's do it with a normal with what we expect to be here. Let's go and change this and do 16. Let's run that. It's good just to play around with these things, and just visualize it, see what it actually looks like. So we do that, we check the heap. All right, there's our chunks. Let's do viz. And 
Okay, it's not taking our input yet, so we've got this one here. Let's go next, next, next. There's our input. Next again, let's check the heap. And here's our input now. So whenever it calls puts, it's going to go through these A's. It's going to print A, A, B, B, A, A, C, A, 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 D, A, A, A. And then it's going to reach a null by, and then it's going to say, okay, we've got to the end of our string. But if we overwrite all of these zeros, all the way up to the next chunk. Whenever it calls puts, it's just gonna put all of that out because it'll keep going until it gets to this null byte down here. Hopefully that made sense. Let us continue, we'll close that, we're gonna change this back. So what we wanna do now is repair that chunk on the heap. So let's go back to our code and see what was actually going on. Remember we put in the leaked value, the secret value, and then it's gonna call gets user input again. And again, there's an overflow here, so we can actually overflow our user input chunk and overwrite the size of the next chunk and the header with the correct value. And you can go through and try and do this manually, kind of the way I just did there in terms of working out what the offsets are. So, you know, by checking heap and checking the layout, we know what's going to happen with our input here. We can basically calculate how many bytes we need to write in order to get up to this size of the next chunk. So just to confirm, I'm sorry if I'm repeating this too much, but just to confirm what we're going to do, we're going to overflow this so there's no zeros left, which is going to merge those two. It's basically going to merge the data in the view of puts, which is going to look for that null terminator. We'll do that. We'll leak the value and supply the correct value. And then we need to overflow this chunk again, but actually add these zeros and this three one back again or something. We need to basically fix the size of that and add those null bytes in so that the chunk isn't broken in the eyes of the heap. Because as you saw, whenever we go to the next breakpoint and check this heap, this isn't right. We need this to be showing 0x31. Uh, well, sorry, not this one. We need, yeah, this one. We need this one to be showing 0x31. And then it'll also be showing the top chunk, which is missing now because we've basically broken the layout of the heap. So I essentially worked it out like that by going and checking the offset here. If we go to our script and say that actually what we want to do here is send 24 null bytes. So I'll do backslash x00 times 24. And we also want to send then our 31. So backslash x31. That's what the size should be. So again, we're doing our 24 to fill this up. So 8, 16, 24. And then we're at this bit that we need to fill in. And for that bit, we do our 31. And then we need to pad it out. It's little endian, so this is reverse order. And we're basically going to say then also plus and then b backslash x zero zero null byte times six. So we're filling up 24 bytes to get us to here. And then we're doing our 31 because this is little endian. So we do our 31 first, and then we do all the null bytes, and then that should have fixed the heap. So We'll save that, we'll close that down. Let's run through that and check our breakpoints again. So first breakpoint, we have a look at the heap. That all looks fine. We can do our viz, that looks fine as well. We'll hit continue, check the heap again. And look at that, we've got now our four chunks. So it's not broken this top chunk, it can see all of the chunks properly. Hey, 420. Um, and it's also fixed the size here. So now if we do viz, we can actually have a look at the layout. It all looks good. It looks the way it should look, which means if we hit continue, we've got to another breakpoint again because it's actually looped round and it's got to the, to the first breakpoint again. So it looks like it's working. Let's try and do it without GDB. We run through and okay, that didn't work because we aren't looping. Let's do a loop. Let's say for I in range 100 and we're going to do this 100 times. Try that again. Looking good, missing flag.txt. So it's got all the way to the win function and it's just not found flag.txt. So I could create the flag.txt or we could just try this on the remote server. So I'll take a copy of the server address and the port number and we'll run this again. Again, because we're using this cool template, we can just do remote. So instead of putting capital GDB at the end, I'll put capital remote, put the server address and the port number and then hit run.
All right, so it takes a little bit longer to come back against remote server, but as you can see, we get our flag now. And I'll add the solve script and a short write-up for this onto my GitHub if you're interested in taking a look at it. But just to recap, we had a heap overflow basically because of the vulnerable input function, which isn't checking to make sure, where is input? I can't find it. Uh, input, there we go. Um, which is not checking to make sure that the chunk that we provide when we take the input, it's not checking to make sure that this data is actually going to fit in there. So that is an overflow, um, but it's not on the stack, it's in the heap. And we're able to use that to overwrite the null terminators, the null bytes, which should be used to separate our user input chunk and the random chunk, which allowed us to leak the random chunk. But then in order to fix things for the next loop, we had to repair the heap layout and make sure that the header of the chunk that we'd overwritten was fixed with the correct value. So we basically went back and set it back to that size, which was 32 bytes. And I hope that makes sense. It's been a while since I did a poem video, so I hope you've enjoyed this. It was good for me to get a refresher on how to use some of these tools because I'm not, I've not been using them too much recently. And uh, if you solve this challenge differently, then uh, I'll be interested to hear about that. And yeah, any questions or comments, as ever, leave them down below. Thanks.